Welcome to the Stanford University School of Medicine and the labs of Rob Malenka in the Department of Psychiatry and Behavioral Sciences and Tom Sudoff in the Department of Molecular and Cellular Physiology. Hello, I'm Patrick Rothwell. I'm a postdoc in the Malenka and Sudoff labs where we study synaptic connections between brain cells. So our interests include the molecular mechanisms that neurons use to communicate, the plasticity of synaptic connections that occurs in the healthy brain, and also dysfunctional synaptic transmission that may play a role in neurological and psychiatric disorders. So I'm here to tell you about our new paper, which you can read in this issue of Cell. In the brain, pre- and postsynaptic specializations are held together by cell adhesion molecules that span the synaptic cleft. Neuroligins are one family of postsynaptic cell adhesion molecules. They bind to presynaptic norexins and shape the functional properties of synaptic connections. Genetic mutations in neuroligin 3 have been identified in humans with autism spectrum disorders. These mutations include a large deletion as well as the R451C point mutation. We study mice carrying these neuroligin 3 mutations in hopes of better understanding how these autism-associated genetic mutations affect brain function and behavior. To examine how these neuroligin-3 mutations affect mouse behavior, we focused on the repetitive and stereotyped movements that are seen in human patients with autism. We found that both the neuroligin-3 knockout and the R451C mutant mice developed a more repetitive and stereotyped motor routine on the accelerating rotor rod. So this is a task that requires mice to perform a coordinated series of footsteps in order to remain on this rod as it rotates at an accelerating speed. So we found that the location and the length of each step, as well as the time in between steps, all became more consistent with training in neuroligin-3 mutant mice, allowing them to stay on the rod longer. Since both neuroligin-3 mutations decrease brain protein levels, we wanted to identify the specific location where loss of neuroligin-3 causes repetitive behavior. But the size of the brain made this a tough task, like looking over all of Stanford's campus and trying to pick out the building where we conducted this research. We focused our analysis on the striatum, a brain region that plays a key role in linking action sequences into stereotyped patterns. Now the striatum is a lot like this glass sculpture that hangs in the lobby of our building. It's a very large region that contains multiple subregions, and within each subregion are a variety of different cell types that are intermingled and hard to differentiate. So we used a combination of mouse genetics and virus injections into the brain to identify a key role for neuroligin-3 in the ventral striatum, also known as the nucleus accumbens. Moreover, this role for neuroligin-3 was specific to one particular cell type, medium spiny neurons expressing the D1 dopamine receptor. We next used electrophysiology to directly measure synaptic function by recording from D1 medium spiny neurons in acute brain slice preparations of the nucleus accumbens. Excitatory synapses onto these neurons appeared to function normally in neuroligin-3 knockout mice. However, we detected a specific decrease of inhibitory synaptic currents, and this led to a shift in the ratio between synaptic inhibition and excitation. So we believe that the synaptic disinhibition of these specific brain cells likely explains the repetitive behaviors exhibited by neuroligin-3 mutant mice. These experiments led us from genetic mutations to a specific synaptic dysfunction in a defined cell type and brain region. This precisely defined neural circuit plays a role in the formation of repetitive motor routines and may be affected in autism spectrum disorders.